This week we have been studying the meaning of words. We learned how words are made up of two components, the signifier, which is the string of phonemes, and the signified, which is the meanings attached to the string of phonemes. So we've only seen examples of words that have one signifier and one signified, one set of meanings, but it is perfectly possible for us to have one signifier, one set of phonemes that associates to two different sets of meanings. When this happens, it is possible that that word can be interpreted in two different ways. For example, in you having a great fall. We're going to call this ambiguity. And in this video, we're going to study lexical ambiguity because a word has two meanings and structural ambiguity because a sentence can have two meanings. Yep, words can have multiple meanings and you've probably known this all your life. Let's uh, take a look. How many meanings can you come up with for the word house in English? Give it a try, come up with four or five. Please pause the video. Here's a few. For example, you probably thought of the prototype for house, which is the building inside of which people live. You probably thought of the grouping of individuals which has a common goal or a common purpose, as in the houses in Harry Potter. You probably thought of a political house, a group of politicians gathered together for a goal. You might have thought of the type of music, um, house music maybe. This is a more marginal meaning. There's even a character from a TV series that is called house. So as you can see, a single signifier can be associated to multiple meanings. And so it, uh, if you use that word, it could be interpreted in multiple ways. For example, in Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, the fall could mean the being attracted by gravity onto the ground or autumn, the, uh, the season of autumn where leaves change. And of course, here the humor depends on breaking our expectations. So whenever we see, we hear Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, we are assuming that it means the one that, uh, where the egg comes crashing down. However, here we are presented with the unexpected meaning, with the one associated to autumn, which is why this could bring a smile to your face. When you have a sentence that can be interpreted in two ways, because a word has two meanings, we're going to call that lexical ambiguity. People use lexical ambiguity to make attempts at humor. For example, the first one is an excellent uh, example of the genre of dad jokes. I'll have two lamb chops and make them lean, please. To which side? As you can see, Lean depends on uh, the, the joke, <laughs> depends on the fact that lean has two different meanings. Lean can mean to have little fat or to support yourself against the surface. Here are newspaper headlines that attempt to use lexical ambiguity, if not for humor, at least to draw our attention because they, they seem unusual. For example, actress sent to jail for not finishing sentence. It could be the string of words or the judicial uh, punishment. Stadium air conditioning fails. Fans protest. Is it the devices or the people who are fanatics? Red tape holds a bridge. Is holding up the providing physical support or delaying? Old school pillars are replaced by alumni. So are the alumni providing the money or providing themselves as material for replacement? So all of these hinge on the fact that these two words could be interpreted uh, with one meaning or the other. A slightly different type of ambiguity is syntactic ambiguity. We have several subtypes of these, but in general, it means that the ordering of the words makes it so that you could understand the sentence in more than one way. For example, here we have the chicken is ready to eat. The, the, we could have the interpretation on the right where there is a living chicken that is going to make the decision to peck on some grains. So the chicken can be an agent who is deciding to eat. On the meaning of on the left, we have the food chicken, which has no power to decide 
to eat or not. So it cannot perform agency. The agency in the one on the left is on the part of whoever is doing the eating. Because of this, this chicken here, the subject here is probably closer to a theme and the chicken is ready to eat. Whereas the one on the right is probably closer to an agent because the chicken can perform agency, can deliberately choose to eat some grain. So this double possibility of having one semantic role or the other is what makes this ambiguous. There's another type of syntactic ambiguity, which is exemplified by this phrase. The boy saw the man with the telescope. So take a moment to try to figure out what's the problem with this one. Please pause the video. The problem with this one is who has the telescope? Is it, is it the boy or the man? Because this sentence could mean that the boy used the telescope to see the man, or it could mean that the boy saw a man who was holding a telescope. So what is this prepositional phrase doing? Is it describing the noun man? Or is it describing the manner in which the verb to see is performed? How is the boy seeing? With a telescope. Who is the man? The man with the telescope. So it, this one could be modifying the noun phrase or modifying the verb. Could you take a moment to try to draw both syntactic trees for both interpretations of this sentence? Try to use uh, simple expert theory trees and Please take a moment to do so. Please pause the video. All right. The tree on the left has the interpretation of the boy saw using a telescope something, the man. As you can see, the prepositional phrase with the telescope is an adjunct of the verbal phrase, which means that it is the manner in which you perform the action saw. Also here we have the man, the direct object. It's in complement position. The direct object, the man, is completely out of range of with the telescope. These are completely separate phrases. So there's no way for the man to be described by the phrase with the telescope. So this one means that the boy saw with the telescope. On the one on the right, this structure means that there was a man with a telescope. Here the prepositional phrase is an adjunct to the noun phrase with the head man. So in this one, man with the telescope, this, these two structures are next to one another. So we can understand this as the man was holding the telescope and then the boy saw all of that. These are two different trees and both of these trees are possible from the string of words, the boy saw the man with the telescope. So that's why we have a syntactic ambiguity. We can have two different ways to draw the tree and therefore two different interpretations. These are more attempts at humor <laughs> using syntactic ambiguity. The ones that we just saw were because of attachment positions, as in new housing for elderly not yet dead. So where does the phrase not yet dead go? Is it describing the elderly? Or is it describing the housing? <laughs> Two sisters united after 18 years at checkout counter. So where does the, ch the phrase at checkout counter go? Does it describe the 18 years? Or does it describe united? <laughs> Here we have syntactic ambiguity because the verb, the phrase can be either a noun or a verb. It can have more than one category. For example, the squat helps dog bite victim. I drops off shelf. Dealers will hear car talk at noon and large church plans collapse, which of course plans can mean the description of the design or to be planning the action of falling apart. We have one final type of syntactic ambiguity, which is incorrect anaphora resolution. So anaphoras are words that need um, their information specified in the preceding discourse. So you need to have said like, the pizza is the one that I love. Because anaphoras need some previous word to give them meaning, one is going to latch on whichever word can give it, me give it meaning in the previous context. So you have two Soviet ships collide, one dies. 
this one should have been resolved to one person or something, but the only thing it found in its immediate uh, context was Soviet ships. So as you can see, all of these depend on some aspect of the structure of the word. I'm sorry, of the sentence. In general, words, there's several types of ambiguity. There's lexical ambiguity, cost because words can have more than one meaning. And there's syntactic ambiguity because the words are arranged in a way that can cause more than one interpretation. And both of these types of ambiguity can be used for humor. People can attempt to use them for humor. In the next video, we'll study more about language and context and hopefully have better humor.